Lonely Street began with Steve Brewer. He's the author of the novel. And at the time, he was a New Mexico-based novelist. And I grew up in New Mexico, and so I ended up reading the book because I was looking for a project to do back home. Fell in love with it, so I just emailed him and said, hey, love your book. Have you ever considered having this turned into a movie? He emailed back within two hours and said, oh, it's always great to hear from a fan. Yeah, I'd love to see Bubba on the big screen. So. Uh, it took me a couple weeks, but I read the script. It was kind of this like comedy, quirky comedy thing. It's hard to get an independent movie made, and this is so quirky that you kind of have to get it to, to get it. It's got fiber. You know, I talked to Patrick and Chappie, and, and um, I think I talked to Chappie first. I was shooting a lot of 49 at yeah. the time in Baltimore, and you sent me the mm -hmm. script, and I had it in the front seat of my car for a uh, about a week. Robert Patrick was with me on that movie. We were working together and him and I were spending a lot of time together. Kevin said, I, I've got this, uh, I've got this story. Uh, it's a comedy based on uh, a book called Lonely Street and uh, me and some buddies are trying to get it made. And there's a great role in there for you to play Elvis. And Robert uh, called Chris in character as the king of rock and roll. Uh, I think I called him up and I said, hello, uh, well, this is Mr. Aaron. I'm out here in Baltimore doing a movie with Kevin Chapman. And, uh, it kind of went like that. We hooked Robert in, and then I've had a long-standing relationship with Jay Moore. We've been friends, I don't know, 25 years, and I brought the script to Jay to play Bubba. He read it one night, called it 8 the next morning, and said, I love it, I'm in, I want to do this. It, it was a great story, you know, a bumbling private eye that gets hired by Elvis Presley, who's alive and living in a motel in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Separately, Jay Moore had the script. Robert Patrick had the script. One night, Robert and Jay happened to be on the Jimmy Kimmel show together. I was doing some press for something else and I uh, was asked to do uh, Jimmy Kimmel. During a commercial break, Robert leans over to Jay and says, hey, what about this Lonely Street movie? Are we going to do this or not? You always want to know what the guests are talking about, because they always lean over to talk to each other, but basically he and I were making sure each other were involved in the movie. I said, yeah, I read that script, Lonely Street. I said, we should do that. I was saying to him, you have to do this movie, and he was telling me, you're doing this, right? You have to do this. And he said, you really want to do it? And I said, yeah, man, let's uh, let's do it. And he says, yeah, we got to figure out how to get it made. We cut our thumbs, and we made like a Blood Brother pack, and uh, took bizarre photos of each other that I still have of him. Once we had those two components, uh, the three of us got together with Jay and his producing partner, Corey Fry, and we uh, shot a seven-minute clip. We shot that in, like I said, one day at the Biltmore Hotel downtown Los Angeles, doubling as some mysterious hotel room that Elvis is supposedly staying in in New Mexico. We shot one scene with Robert playing Mr. Aaron and Jane playing Bubba the first time he goes to meet him. We shot a, uh, a demo, really, a promo, down at a hotel downtown. I really believed in it. You know, I put the money up and we, we shot it and it, it looked fantastic. We used that clip to take two investors along with the script. So they could read the script, see the clip, and say, okay, we get this. It's pure protein, man. That's good for you. We then did the process of going out and meeting investors and getting people that uh, were as, as excited about the movie as we were. And we got enough people on board to finance our film and, and get it up and running. My boy, oh boy. You know, we, we started to shop the movie, you know, kind of traditional routes of like production companies might want to make it. It wasn't quite marketing, it was more like begging. Clever begging. begging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We wanted to make the movie for a lot more money than we, yeah. at that point. And we said, let's cut this back. And we went into the production with not enough money to finish the movie, we didn't finish principal photography of the movie. So not only was every day a bit of an adventure, but it was like Absolutely. filmmaking on top of fundraising. <laughs> and That's true. And, you know, and it's been that way throughout the whole process. <laughs> I, I think the, the big close was when you would, you know, cavalcade someone through the set as we were actually shooting, you know, and like let him sit in a director's chair and maybe watch the monitor and then walk him to their car and ask him for $25,000, you know? <laughs> we did that That was like the big times. close, you know? I know the move and the king is dead! Again! Oh, and at the same time, it was, it, there was nothing disingenuous about it yeah. because each of us were in you know, several thousand dollars of our own money, but also, you know, years of time. This is for you, baby! I did this all for you! 
when we started putting the, the cast together, it wasn't a matter of who he wanted. It was a matter of who would do it. <laughs> because we had no money once again. The casting came about a number of ways. We got the script to friends of friends, actor friends. Jay Moore and I actually go back. Jay Moore did his very first movie with me. I called Joe, planted the seed with Joe, and asked him if he would come. And then Jay called him the next day and grilled him again. So it was just one of those things. You know, you get a call from guys that you, you know and like and said, hey, you want to make a movie with us? I said, sure. Finally, Joe called his manager and said, look, I know these guys have no money. They're good guys. I think I'll have a good time with them. So that's that's how we pulled Joe Montagna in. I mean, I like the genre anyway. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, the narration, and it's kind of like, you know, it's a throwback to the old detective mystery novels, but it's got that kind of black comedy humor aspect of it. The king is back, Jack! Nancy Greenkeys was our casting director, and she came on board, and she had some great ideas. And You know, she brought us Cat Williams, who, who Cat Williams credits as the woman who gave him his first break in the business. So. She brought in uh, Cat Williams. Uh, she brought us in Mikey Starr, because Nancy, prior to her life as a casting director, was an agent. So she represented Mikey, Mike Starr. I think Nancy suggested me. I think that's how it happened. And uh, Chris had called me. Uh, Chris and uh, I think I talked to Peter eventually. And they threw all the names at me, you know. Lindsay Price, I think, was the only person that we, we actually had a casting for, right? Lindsay will tell you that she did it the old-fashioned way. And it was an audition process, but it was really, it was, it was casting couch. Jesus. I had the, the initial audition where I just met Peter and the group. Was Jay there? Yes, he was. Yes, he was there first. Oh, that's right. Oh my gosh, it seems like a, a lifetime ago, but I think that was the initial thing, was uh, whether or not I could um, hang with the boys, particularly that boy. The cops are outside. How about I bring him inside and have you arrested for uh, trespassing, slander, and, and loitering? Hmm. OK, fine. Invite them in. You know, it's interesting. Like, you agree to do a movie, and you, you know, have friends and other people you know that are producing it. And then it just sort of takes on a life of its own, where you say, OK, we're casting the, uh, the uh, Lindsay Price's uh, character. Come to our offices. And you say, we have, we have offices? How, like, what? Like, oh, yeah, you know, come on down. We have offices. Lindsay came in, and right away, she just had this rapport. She got Jay. And he did. So, uh, he made some jokes about Koreans, and I rolled with it. And he thought probably, well, I can offend this or not offend this girl. And um, and so I think that's how I got the job. It was obvious between them as actors that she wasn't going to let Jay's shenanigans rattle her. Bye bye, bye bye, uh -uh. Nikki Cox was married to Jay Mobile in the process of being married. No, I think they were just engaged. No, they were married. No, because Jeff went to no, the wedding. No, I was in the wedding. I was, I was, yeah, I was an usher in the wedding. engaged. What? In hindsight, I probably could have saved production money on a trailer, considering we just sat in the same one all day. He don't look like a killer. Then Nancy brought us Paul Rodriguez uh, and Ernie Hudson. Well, she planted the seed with Ernie Hudson, and once again, Joe Montagna and Ernie go way back. As a matter of fact, I think Joe is the godfather of Ernie's daughter. Right. So Joe made that call and bridge that in. Disrespecting the king, a rock and roll lady, you have sunk to an all-time low. The whole thing kind of clicked like that, you know? Uh, it was great, I mean, we just, you know, you don't realize how many friends you have in the world until you uh, are trying to make a movie.